guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo Cunny Corso. So I wanted to do a video for you guys oh. on something that I've been wanting to do and I've been waiting on Reese, but she's so busy that honestly, if I keep waiting for her, we'll never announce it. Um, she's just got, she got the little youngsters at home and time is harder for her to um, set aside. Um... And then she'll have, like, emergencies, like, you know, her daughter had, like, a dental emergency this morning, um, which kids have. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. So, especially because we get so many questions, and, and I don't want for people to be like, oh, well, you said you were going to do this. And it's like, well, you know, I, I didn't want to make the announcement. Um, and it feels weird making it because it was Reese's idea, but, hey, you know, it is what it is. So, <clears throat> um... So a lot of people have been asking me, oh, okay, are you going to breed bullies now? And the answer to that is yes, but also simultaneously no. Um, so basically, you know, we've kind of, you know, we've, I want to first start off by saying that I am much more familiar with bullies than even Reese. Reese um, was very much in the, in the, She's never had a pit bull. She never wanted a pit bull. She's never liked those kinds of dogs. So she didn't know anything about them. And when I told her I was getting a bully, she basically thought I was getting a pit bull. Um, and she thought they were all the same. And um, basically these just big, huge pit bulls. Um, and so I kind of had to, to really um, spend some time letting her know, like, the differences in, in the dogs and the bullies and all this stuff. And, and, and even um, whenever I made my initial video about it, there was a lot of commentary um, not really understanding what a bully is. Many people were just, they just, they believe that they know, and so they just go off of that belief. And the reality is that it's not easy to understand because there's basically like four size dogs that each have um, different, I won't say all of them have different genetics, but from the more extremes, from the smallest to the largest, there are different breeds that go into them. Um, so like the big XL bully dogs are the result of mixing Mastiffs and um, originally like American Bulldogs and Alpha. Ah, put that down now. Um... I don't know where she got that from. Um, basically, just like a bunch of different breeds, but big breeds to produce, um, to produce the um, size and the width and all of that stuff of those XL bullies. And then you have um, on the smaller end, on the absolute smallest, like those micros, are like Frenchies and Boston's and all kinds of stuff like that that's in them. And then with the ones that I have. Um, there's like, you know, English bulldog and stuff like that. So they're very different dogs, um, for very different purposes. Like a lot of the XL people use their dogs for, um, like bite work and things like that. And, and so what, what we found was that it was really impossible to, um, there's so much work that goes into simply telling someone I own a classic bully um, or a pocket bully, which um, mine are on the smaller end of like the classics. So I think both of my dogs have one parent that um, is a pocket, I believe. So they are smaller. I mean, you have to understand that that, that that puppy over there is six months old, right? Like she's already done a lot of her growth. Um, these smaller dogs like this are typically done growing by, by the time that they're a year old. Um, and so at least done in the height, velocity quit. Um, they might fill out a bit, but, mm -hmm. um, but they're not going to get a whole lot bigger. So she's not going to get a whole lot bigger than that. And, and so anyway, I got Reese went on this big deep dive and she just was very turned off by the breed. She loves my dog, right? Like she loves, um, Tommy boy. And, and she also loves this new girl, but she does not like the scene. She does not like what their goals are as far as what other breeders are and what their goals are or for, for these very kind of extreme dogs. Um, and she was like, look, she's like, I like 
the dogs you have. She goes, I do not like what most of them have. And she goes, I only like some of them. And she says, I don't like the scene. Um, and she goes, and I really, I want to breed these dogs, but I don't want to breed bully dogs. She's like, I want to create our own breed. And, you know, me being me, I'm like, heck yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to do it? I'll do it. Um, I wouldn't have been as bold as that, but I love that she was. And I'm always, you know, I'm down to back my best friend. Um, and I also think it's a great idea. And, um, and this is where, and I'm like, I'm gonna tell you a story as to why I think it's a good idea and ultimately what our, what our plan is. So, um, those of you may know a breed in the AKC called an Amstaff. Not everybody knows this, but the Amstaff, um, used to be an American pit bull terrier. Um, it was a very similar situation in many breeds where they got accepted into AKC. The stud book was open and then eventually it was closed and no further dogs from outside of the AKC could be allowed to breed in. In the 80s, I guess because of all of the bad press for the pit bull, they changed the name to American Staffordshire Terrier. Now that doesn't change the DNA that's in those dogs. They are still 100% American Pit Bull Terrier. And in fact, many of them may in fact be purer um, than a lot of what is even being sold as American Pit Bull Terriers these days. Um, but they don't have a bad reputation because they were bred by, um, responsible people that really were trying to breed a respectable show dog and they were not trying to breed for extremes or for looks or for, um, any of that kind of mess. And so their dogs just don't have that reputation. Um, <clears throat> they also did things to separate themselves. Like I said, they changed the name and they also changed the crop. So like on many of them, they have a much longer crop. In fact, those of you um, may notice that Tommy Boy has a long crop. That is actually a uh, a, um, a show, a long show, uh, Amstaff show crop is what he's got. And so we're going to be doing the same thing. We, um, th right now, in our opinion the bully dog name is completely destroyed. Um, it's been destroyed in reputation, um, except for by those who don't care, who, who like that reputation. But for anyone who sees the value in these dogs just being loving companions um, and not all the other stuff that goes with it, um, it's just, it's kind of a shame. And so I don't, think that this dog here deserves to be wrapped up in the same crowd as these bull these these dogs that are that are attacking people and hurting people and and that whole crowd of just riffraff and all of that stuff and so um and so anyway we want to distance ourselves from that we believe that these dogs are at the very most um sweet and loving family companions um, and we want to market them that way. And so it was Reese's idea, not mine. Hey, you will stop that now. You will absolutely stop that. Lay down now. Now. Down, Blondie. Down. Now. You will stop trying to start problems with Mona. I am trying to record and you will not disrupt my conversation with these people. So cut it out. And just so you know, I'm watching you too. You cut it out too. And so anyway, so these are super sweet. They don't have high braid prey drive. They're not fighting dogs. Um, they don't deserve any of that reputation. And in order to, to, to help them from that, we're going to um, remove them. And, and that's not an unprecedented thing. Like I said, the, the people with the Amstaffs did it, Mer American Staffordshire Terrier. And on top of that, you know, anytime somebody's had there, there's a, there's a reason why in our court system, you have the ability to change your name. You know, if you, if you are known as a certain person and maybe you did some things in your youth and you destroyed your reputation in your name, you can change your name. You have to apply for it. Um, but you can change your name to get away and kind of get a fresh start. And we want these dogs to have a fresh start. On top of that, it's not just a name change. We very much have different goals in mind. We want to breed structurally sound dogs. We want, we want dogs that can naturally whelp. We don't want dogs that have to have cesareans all the time. 
So we're not going to be breeding for these oversized heads. They're going to still have beautiful heads. Like I love his head. I think his head is fantastic. It doesn't need to be some big, huge bulbous head. Um, you know, we want them to be stout and all that stuff. But what we don't want is where they have those big, huge shoulders that just jut out and the rear juts out and they look like a gorilla. Like if you're looking at them from the top, it looks like a gorilla. Like I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Neither is Reese. Um, and so ultimately we have different goals when, if, when breeding these dogs anyway. And so instead of stepping on any bully people's toes and breeding and, and trying to change the breed that they've, you know, created and that they like, we want to move in a different direction. So we like you. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You thought about it and then you looked at me and then you thought better of it, which is a dang good idea. Don't, don't do it again. Don't do it again. So, um, get out of it. Quit digging. Uh, and so anyway, so like I said, we don't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, we, we like, um, these, these dogs, um, these are, um, they are, like I said, technically called bullies because all bullies are under the same name, but they're, they're all very different and I'm tired of trying to explain it to people. Um, I think it's unnecessary. And so Reese picked the name, not me, um, but we're going to call them Ferruja Bulldogs. And, and we're just going to be breeding, um, for, um, a similar dog to like a Frenchie or a Bulldog, not in looks, but in, in type and temperament, right? So we're looking, this is not a working dog. This is purely a pet, purely a companion, nothing more, nothing less. Um, you know, they're going to have good structure. We want straight top lines. We want good rears. We want good fronts, good necks, um, good uh, tails. We don't want any of that crooked tail stuff going on, any of those twisted tails. Um, and so, you know, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and that's why, like when people were asking me about the, the blue eyes on this dog and the standard, which is not against the bully standard, but it is against the UK C standard, but the ABKC standard, it's a, uh, it's undesirable, but not a disqualification to have blue eyes. But having said that for us, um, you know, we're going to do our own thing. So, um, we are going to allow for Merle dogs, but no Merle to Merle breedings. So no double Merles. Um, and we're even looking at having a, basically a rule that if you want to, that if you have a Merle dog, if you're trying to register Merle puppies, um, every Merle dog. So like if I had a Merle stud and I wanted to use him, I would have to submit his genetic testing for his color testing. And then you would not be able to register a litter if both parents are Merle, right? So it's a way of kind of internally policing ourselves and ensuring that yes, we do allow Merle, but we are going to be doing things to prevent people from breeding them irresponsibly. Um, and who knows, you know, we don't know how far it'll get, but the, the main thing is that we love these dogs, but we don't love the scene. We don't love the reputation. We don't love the name. Um, and, um, we don't love the goals that many of the people that have these dogs are going for. We are going to be going for a fit dog that is a smaller dog like this, that is still going to be muscular and all that stuff, but not overly muscular. So not overdone, as you guys know, that's how we call it in more of the, in the show world, we, some dogs we call overdone. We're not looking for overdone dogs. We're looking for dogs that are in balance. They're, they should be muscular and stout, friendly, fearless, yet non-aggressive, no prey drive. Um, and so those are our goals. So it's going to be a shocker, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that are going to be talking trash, but that's fine by me. I really don't care. It's nothing new. Um, and, um, and like I said, it's, it's, um, it's something that Reese and I are doing together. We're still going to be breeding our Corso. That is ultimately always our main goal, our main thing, but we love these dogs. They're a joy to have. Um, and, uh, and we want more people to be able to appreciate that and not be scared of them based upon a name that they're associated with, but that they really don't have anything in common with as far as that um, reputation judgment. <clears throat> so we're going to do our best to kind of, um, remove these dogs from that stigma and really, um, I would say broaden the gap, um, of people or not the gap, I would say broaden the audience of people that, um, would ultimately be, um, interest velocity. I'm watching you. Um, broaden our audience of people that would be interested in these dogs because if you've if you've got a corso from me 
you know, all I can tell you is these are great companion dogs to have with Corsos. Um, I've, you know me, I've always been looking for a smaller dog to add to my pack that I could have with my Corsos. It's been a struggle. Um, and you guys know I've, I've had some dogs and it didn't work out. But these guys are fantastic. Love them to pieces. Absolutely awesome. And very happy to have them. Hey, Nirvana, what did I say? Um, and so we are, we are going strong on it. And um, now we will still register them as bullies because they are. Um, for those that um, want that, but ultimately we will be marketing them as Farooja Bulldogs because we don't have the same goals in mind. So it really doesn't make any sense for me to market them as bullies when we're not trying to breed them to that standard. We're not trying to breed these overly um, wide dogs. We don't care about any of that. We're not trying to breed these dogs with just gigantic heads that ultimately are a big reason why they're having birthing issues. Um, we're kind of getting back to, to a more sensible dog. Um, and that's just kind of where we, where we want to take it. And we think that there is absolutely a place for these dogs and we're going to, we're going to do it. Um, every dog that we add to our program is going to be hand selected for temperament and for, um, structure. And so we're really going to be doing the best that we can to ensure that every single dog that starts in this, um, Faruja Bulldog program is going to be of, um, you know, part of our goal. Um, now I'm not, um, Lee, I'm not going to say that we will never mix anything in. Um, Reese and I have talked about that. I, I, I personally don't think that we'll need to, but you know, um, it's not beyond the scope of things, I suppose. Move. Hey, 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 hey. What'd I say? Nirvana, go. Um, but like I said, I personally think we can achieve our goal with these, with these dogs. Um, you know, for us, what's funny is that basically we like the dogs that they don't like. So, so they're undesirables. The ones that, you know, are not as muscular. Um, they like a very short, compact dog. We're looking for um, a little bit more... Like they're, they're still going to be compact, but I'm not, I'm not going for like a Frenchie or a bulldog. Like, uh, you know, I really want a dog that, that, um, I don't know, has grace, has balance, um, can move, you know, and that's really what I'm, what I'm going for. Um, so anyway, I know it's a big announcement and, um, you know, like I said, I know there's going to be a lot of people that, that don't like it and have all their opinions. And that's a great thing about the world is you're allowed to have your opinion. Doesn't make it right. Uh, just because you have a thought doesn't make it right. But, you know, it's not against the law. We're going to do what we want to do. And we're going to try to, for me, it's all about my customer base. You know what I mean? My job um, is to be a breeder. My job is to provide loving and healthy animals um, for people's families and homes. And I see a area for, um, I see a, a dog that ultimately is being exempt from a huge market just simply because it's bearing the wrong name. And, um, I want to save them from that in the same way that the AMP staff was saved from the unfortunate, um, reputation of pit bulls in the eighties. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I get it. If you don't understand it, totally fine, but that's what we're going to be doing. And, um, you know, look for us. So in the future, if you see us calling them Faruja Bulldogs, there's a reason for that. We want people to um, reassociate these dogs um, without the bully um, name. We want them to see them as bulldogs, which to me they are. They sound like bulldogs. They act like bulldogs. Um, they're very, very bulldog in nature. They sound like, like how Frenchies sound and how bulldogs sound. They have this very, almost like the way velocity sounds where they, they have this, rah, rah, rah. they have that whole thing going on. Th these dogs have that. They don't sound like pit bulls. They don't act like pit bulls. Um, and, and even like the bully thing, like being tough, like whatever. It's like, they're not dude. They're, they're, they're sweet little bulldogs. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so anyway, and I know that there are going to be some that are not like that. And I want to um, first be, be um, very clear that I do recognize that, that there are going to be dogs that are going to have um, that, that fighting drive and things because they do come from pit bulls. But 
we will not be working with those dogs. You know what I mean? We are going to be very careful to only use these dogs that very much are pulling genetically from the bulldog. They act like bulldogs. Um, that's what we're going to be focusing on. So, um, like I said, every dog within our lines are going to be handpicked by us. And, um, and we're going to just be very you know, very, very good about it, very clear about it. And we're going to use our expertise, and we are, um, both Reese and I, we're going to use our experience and our expertise to um, to breed these dogs and breed the best that we can and get the structure going and all of that stuff. So it's very exciting for us. Like I said, I still love my Corsos. I'm still going to be doing my Corsos, 100%. But, um but anyway, but this is going to be a very fun side project. And I've got nothing but time. Reese has nothing but time. Um, Velocity says enough with the shenanigans right now. So that was the two fawn dogs. That's Preacher getting beat up by his daughter and his granddaughter. Daughter Blondie, granddaughter um, uh, uh, Nirvana, and then another granddaughter Switch. And then Velocity, which is I think his niece. Hey, preacher, leave it be. She's not in heat. So anyway, well, I'm gonna let y'all go. I gotta get inside, but just figured I would do that. Figured I'll let y'all know because Reese is taking forever. And I, like I said, I've got people keep asking me, oh, are you gonna be breeding bully dogs? And I keep saying, yeah, but it's not really the full truth. And and I've been like, and then I don't want people to go in and be like, because I always get that. People are like, well, you said you're breeding bully dogs and now you're doing this. And it's like, no, we've been, we've been doing this. We've been gonna do this, but I've been trying to keep it a secret and um unfortunately uh if we wait on reese's timeline we'll just be doing it y'all will just y'all y'all will just be confused because we just gonna be putting out Ferruja bulldogs and be like what um but like i said they are going to be different they're we're, you know the the staffordshire the bull the not the bull the the american staffordshire terrier looks very different than a lot of the pit bulls that were being bred at that time and so even those dogs are different. So you can take something that is genetically the same and breed it to look completely different. And so I do want to be clear on that. We're not just, um, our, our goal is not just to take the hard work of other people and, and keep it exactly the way it is and just rename it. That's not the goal. The goal is to change the dogs. We don't really like the goals of the bully dog community and we're not hating on them for it. That That is what they're doing and we don't, like it is what it is, but we want to do things differently. We see a market for a dog that is marketed for families um, and for, you know, homes with children. And we don't want there to be any stigma. We don't want to have to spend 15, 20 minutes trying to explain all of the shenanigans that are all the different kinds of bully dogs. And it's just nonsense. And we're just not going to do it. So anyway, I hope y'all are having a good day. And those of you that know me and trust Reese and I, um, I hope that you guys look forward to the journey, um, and, um, you know, I think, I don't know how soon I'll do it, because managing multiple YouTube channels is actually, it's actually a lot of work, and if the views are not there, it's not worth it to do it, and that's why, like, people have been wondering about my Life Ascends channel, it's like, look, I'm not, I don't have the following of other chicken channels, and I don't have the viewership on there. So it really just isn't worth my time right now to um, to do the videos of the chickens because really not a whole lot of people are watching them. And honestly, it's too much work to get in there and take the time out of my day to do all that. I have like ADHD, so it's hard for me to stay focused as it is. And whenever I have to like pause my work and make a video and all that, it's just, it, it's difficult for me. Um... But we probably will be doing the Furuja Bulldog thing. I really do want to document it for anybody else. Like, we're not greedy people. And we're even going to have, like, unlike a lot of people on our standard, we're going to be very clear on how we achieved what we achieved and how to maintain it. You know, we're looking for one of the biggest things in our standard is going to be that they absolutely cannot have too short of a muzzle. It will literally be a disqualification, like straight up disqualification. We are not going to go the way of so many other of the bulldogs, the small bulldogs, like the Frenchie, like the English bulldog. And what was supposed to be the old English bulldog was not supposed to be like that. And now they're getting like that. And Levitt bulldogs, they're getting like that. Um, and so uh, anyway, I just, I don't like it. I'm tired of it. I, I don't want to... Um, 
I don't want to, um, that to happen. We don't. So we're going to make sure that our standard is very clear about um, what these dogs are supposed to be and what they're not supposed to be, how long the muzzle is supposed to be. It's going to be very similar to a Corso muzzle, not too long, not too short. It's going to be nice and wide. And we're going to be looking for that same tight undershot bite. Um, and like I said, we're, we are going for a bulldog. And so we are looking for that upside down U at the lips, just like the Corso. What we mean by that, Velocity, come here, is this, yes, sweetheart, right here. This right here is the U. So you're looking for the U. Um, so we're looking for that. And so a pronounced chin. We want a wide eye set, not too round like the bulldog eyes, but you know, it's going to be a beautiful dog. And, um, and we're going to be doing just like we do with the Corsa. We're going to make sure that they're healthy. We're going to make sure that they're bred um, uh, with fantastic temperaments, fantastic structure. And uh, we're going to do our best to make sure that we're putting out super high quality companions for people's homes. And um, kind of fill in this gap where people have been wanting this small companion you know, size bulldog, and every time there's one made, it just goes to this extreme because a lot of people don't know how to breed the a muzzle that is neither too short, neither too long, and they just keep going to the extreme. And recent, I have a very unique experience with the Corso where Corso muzzles are like that. They're, they're not too short and they're not too long, and if you're not careful, it can be hard to get it right. You can end up with dogs like Blondie, um, or you can end up on going the opposite direction and getting these really super short muzzles that, you know, and the, and the short nair, the, the tight nares, which is basically the nares are the, the, the openings of the, of the nose of the nostril. Come here, Mona, right here. These, these holes right here, those are the nares and on boop, boop, boop. And on bulldogs, it'll be really tight and we don't want that. That's what's one of the reasons why they can't breathe. It's not just that the muzzle's too short, it's that the nose holes are too tight and closed. And so it's, it's, it's even harder for them to breathe. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're gonna be going on. As you see here with my boy, Tommy boy, he's got good length to his muzzle. It's um, fantastic in my opinion. It's not too short, it's not too long. This girl here, her muzzle's a little longer than my liking, but that's okay, we'll work with it. As you guys know, we worked with Blondie. And uh, anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. So we will be starting our own registry and doing all of that stuff. But um, that's basically it. So um, and then for those of you who don't know what Faruja is. Oh, Lord. Switch is playing with her babies. Um, Faruja is. Um, so those of you may know that my family has Maltese heritage. Uh, my grandfather is Maltese, 100 percent Maltese. And um and so our our family last name is Faruja. My my grandfather's last name is Faruja, and my mother was a Faruja um, until she was married. So um, so anyway, so it was Reese's idea completely. I was going to call my kennel Faruja Kennels for my um, bullies. Really, preacher. Hmm. Okay. What do you identify as a fawn dog? Jeez, bro. Um. Anyway, so uh, that's kind of where we're going, you know us. Never, never one to keep it to keep it boring for too long. <laughs> Reese and I are always doing our own thing, and I love it. I'm super excited that she had the idea to do this, and that she, because I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't know that I would have had the courage. I would have been like, nah, dude, people are gonna talk way too much crap. But Reese was like, let's do it, and I was like, you know what? You want to do it? I'll do it. So here we are. Oh, sweet baby girl. Sweetness. This poor girl. She's so, she's just too big for her own good. So anyway, oh my God. Jesus. Girl, be gentle with your child. Anyway, well, Reese is calling me for the second time now. So I got to answer it and actually let her know that I just spilled the beans. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.